it is sleep time in our house and that's quite fitting because this video is about how we've been learning about sleep. We have focused on animal hibernation as well as animals sleep sleeping just in general. Um, we've been reading a lot about human sleep needs and um, facts about human sleep and we've kind of touched a little bit on dreams as well as on um, the time zones around the world and how people experience nighttime at different times depending on where they live in the world. Plus I have a couple of fun bedtime stories or sleep related stories for children as well that I would like to share. I'm in my pajamas tonight. I'm really living into the theme of sleep. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on my channel, Freestyling It. I'll just start off this video by saying that school has looked very different for us um, the past week or so than it would normally look. There has been some upheaval in our lives and there's been a need to shift things. I did not plan for the upheaval to coincide with the week that we were going to be learning about sleep, but it ended up being so perfect because we took our school books with us to bed. And so while school, our days were not able to really hold the natural rhythms of school that we usually adhere to and we usually engage in, we did school a little bit differently. This is just one of the reasons why I love educating at home, that education and learning looks different based on whatever season you find yourself in. Sometimes it looks like sit down learning, other times it looks like learning on the go. It's such a gift to me that I don't need to think that my children's learning is on pause or in any way um, hindered just because life isn't smooth or isn't normal. So we enjoyed cuddling in bed with these books, the stack of books. My kids would pick one or two books each a night for us to read before going to bed. All right, I'm going to start off with the a couple books concerning animals and hibernating, which is really um, a suitable topic for our season right now. We're in February in New England, so things are snowy and cold, and we can know that animals hibernating here in this area is a real fact of life. So here we have a warm winter tale. And this is about conversations between animals and their parents, so baby animals and their parents, um, about how humans keep warm. And it's really kind of funny, the things that the animals um, suggest. Do they have a tail to wrap around them to keep them warm? Do they have a burrow in which they can hibernate in? At the end of it, the conclusion is drawn that animals are well equipped to survive the winter elements. They are not suffering. <laughs> they were designed to make it through harsh weather and cold weather um, and to be able to live through it well. So, A Warm Winter's Tale, a great, thoughtful, thought-provoking, as well as entertaining uh, story. The next book I have about hibernation is called Under the Snow, and this provides a really great picture of how different animals live through the winter um, and basically go into a low-key mode um, called hibernation and in all their different forms. So it addresses, you know, bears and the wildlife that I think we more readily think of when we think of hibernation, but it also talks about turtles and frogs. And I think these are salamanders on this front page. Um, so this does a great job addressing many different methods that animals use to hibernate and make it through 
the winter months. To continue with the animal theme, um, although this is not about hibernation, I See the Animals Sleeping, a bedtime story, was a fascinating look at how different animals make themselves comfortable when they sleep, their situations, the time of day or night when they sleep, um, etc. This book had bigger print in it as well as smaller print so it was kind of optional you could read the bigger print and that kind of provided the storyline for children but then there was additional info and facts if there was questions or a desire to go a little deeper into um, the lives and sleeping habits of the animals featured in this book this book, Snoozorama, The Strange Ways That Animals Sleep, was very similar to the previous mentioned book, and it was well received and interesting as well. Um, they both covered the same animals and then some different animals from each other, so I would recommend both these books as being interesting and helpful in this topic. For the next portion of books, I want to share briefly the titles that we read that were fun titles in regards to sleep. This one is called Good Night, Sammy. And this is a book that from my childhood. I have good memories associated with this book, Good Night, Sammy, a really fun story of a little fox trying to settle in to sleep, but feeling unable to. And his mom and dad who come in to help him as he settles. This is called The Snowy Nap by the well-known author Jan Brett. She has a lot of really wonderful children's picture books that she has authored and um, this was another great um, example of her work. Um, Hedgy is ready to go and hibernate for the winter, but he receives word from other farm animals that he's going to miss out on a lot of different things like the snowflakes and um, watching the children build snowmen, uh, <laughs> etc. And so Hedgy decides to try to stay awake long enough to experience winter. Dr. Seuss's Sleep Book. This is um, a great example of Dr. Seuss's work. <laughs> there is a lot of fun words in here, a lot of fun um, and interesting ways of thinking about sleep, and all the sleeping creatures that must refresh and replenish themselves. Um, the build up to sleep, all the yawns that must happen before sleep occurs. Another really good Dr. Seuss book and this one was one that my librarian had picked out for us called The Very Long Sleep. And this is about um, four different animals who decide to spend the winter together, three of whom hibernate. The other one didn't realize that he was going to be bunking down with some hibernating animals and he finds himself kind of at a loss for what to do when everyone else goes to sleep and he can't. <laughs> sleep for that long. So kind of a fun, interesting, neat take on hibernation. This book, While You Are Sleeping, A Lift the Flat Book of Time Around the World, um, was the one book that we looked at that talked about time and how different parts of the world are in nighttime while other parts of the world are in the daytime. This book has some great illustrations in it and is a wonderful picture of how the world is so diverse and people's experiences happening at exactly the same time can be so completely different. All right, the last stack of books I have are specifically about informational nonfiction books about sleep. So here's the first one. Sleep, why we re rest and recharge to refuel. This is a simple book with simple um, words and big colorful pictures that cover the basics of why sleep is important, what it does in our bodies in very basic terms, and what the sleep cycle looks like. This was probably my favorite nonfiction book on sleep, what happens when you sleep. There was questions that they asked that could be thought of and mulled over. Also added some 
hands-on activities that you could kind of um, do right then to experiment with different things. And this was on snoring, um, how to make a snore happen. This is a good overview on dreams, dreams and what they mean. Almost every morning when we woke up in the week, I asked the kids, did you have any dreams? And um, it was quite interesting to see what dreams that they had had. And even sometimes the dreams that they had were connected to something we had read from the books the previous night. I think we all found it um, fascinating that um, the things they were dreaming could be so connected with what we had read um, right before bed. Um, dreams and what they mean also promoted some great discussion and thought around dreams in the Bible from a biblical perspective and how God has used dreams in people's lives to promote action, to tell and warn um, of imminent things um, coming in the future. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think dreams are fascinating myself. I wouldn't mind doing some more reading on dreams and their implications for um, our lives. The last two books are both books that are full of facts. Definitely a lot of interesting <laughs> facts in here. You wouldn't want to live without sleep. How true. They kind of go all over the map as far as sleep goes from um, nightmares and different um, people who have stayed awake at different times for different reasons. Um, famous people in that sense. Um, the weird world of sleep, talking about different animals or even the human experience in sleep. It just covers so many different things. The future of sleep. That it was a really fascinating book to look through, but not one that I read every single word to the kids. Again, this was one that they would point out pictures. I would skim through it silently, and then I would decide either to read them the you know little paragraph or to summarize it in my own words. And then the last one, I don't know how to pronounce, you know, Z's. Is that you just say Z's? <laughs> Catch some Z's, I guess. The most interesting book you'll ever read about sleep. And this again was another book that was full of different facts on different topics. So this one's why we dream, dreaming and memory, and then it had, you know, some right, you know, some paragraphs about each of these topics, as well as, you know, other different facts here and there. Um, so we, we also um, looked through the book. We read what it was interesting to us and kind of left the rest. And that's the last book from our stack. We really had fun with this topic and I think we gleaned a lot from it. I know that it gave me a greater appreciation for animals and hibernating and as well as dreams. It really promoted um, some interesting thought thoughts on dreams and my own experience with dreams even within this week and my kids experience with dreams and I hope that it can provide inspiration for if you're pursuing a unit study maybe it's not on sleep maybe it's on something else but check out my other videos for further inspiration um, and to see if you're pursuing a unit study that we've already done and perhaps you would like to glean from some of my offerings thanks for joining me tonight happy sleep <laughs>